Hi, welcome back to your paint box. Uh, we're working on another spring project and it's going to be the little child with the uh, colorful umbrella. It has about five steps, so we're going to walk you through step by step. Um, I did instruct you on the written tutorial how to lay out your palette. Uh, so I've already got my palette laid out. Uh, the palette paper that we send you, I just tape it down to a, a surface that I don't mind getting paint on. Um, I actually use even a stiff piece of cardboard. But if you take the, if you take the paper down, it won't move around on you. And, um, you know, slide along and, be, and get out of your way while you're painting. So it's easier to just kind of keep it taped down to something solid. We're going to start again with the drawing. And let's get started. Okay, so here we are okay. with step one, and again, we're going to start with the drawing. So I'm going to get my brush just a little wet with this cup of water. I'm going to go to the yellow ochre. Again, that's a pastier pigment, so it's a nice one to draw with. It dries a little faster. Uh, and oils do take a long time to draw, remember, I mean to dry, remember that. So with the drawing, I'm going to do what I usually do here, just marking the halfway points. And then I'm going to look at this... Uh, picture here and figure out, just kind of make some little dots as to where my parameters are. So for example, I'm just seeing a little triangle of green right up there and a little triangle of green here. So we're going to come back. Kind of nice composition to have that umbrella going off the page like that. It looks like the feet, the little red boots are just about a half an inch up off the bottom of the page. And um, if that's about a half an inch, I'm thinking that this here is this dimension here is about an inch and it's below center so somewhere right around there is the jacket and again these dots and, and marks are just making the parameter uh, of where our, our figures are, and objects are going to go so the bottom of the umbrella here is right at about the halfway point and it kind of makes a curve back up above the halfway point here so that's pretty close to what the umbrella is going to look like and then for the child, the little rain jacket, that line's, that line's almost coming straight down center. So I'm going to come from this dot to this dot, kind of through center, and do the little yellow jacket. Kind of have it kind of at an angle over on this side, like it's, there's some movement and wind. And then the toe of the first boot's just a little to the left of center, right about there. and the feet are coming down at a little bit of an angle. And then something to be aware of when drawing is always think about the negative space. That's the space between the objects. The objects are the legs and the boots. So the negative space is the skinny little space in between. So you know your drawing is going to look correct if then you also have just this little skinny space in between. And so it's a pretty simple drawing. Take your time and if you need to put the uh, video on pause to catch up with me, then you can do that. Um, I'm going to find the center of the umbrella and it's up high and to, a little to the left of center. And I have one, two, three, four colors here. And if you miss and don't get quite the same number of colors, it's not going to matter. And then, so those are kind of the dark colors at the top. We have the purple band there, and then we have red, orange, yellow, light aqua, dark aqua, and blue. So I think we did that just about right. Um, these pretty little shapes, the scallops at the end of the umbrella, we, you know, don't worry too much about those. We'll get that as we, as we start painting. And that is step one. We're getting ready to start step two, which is going to be painting the background. And oil paint is a nice thick medium, and it because it is, um, you want to make sure you layer things so that the items in the foreground come in later. You want the, the background going in first and the thickness of those foreground items on top of that. So we're going to start with the grass and the sidewalk. So with the grass, I'm going to grab some of the sap green 
and I might make a couple of, you know, I like to make two or three versions of every color so that it's not monotonous. I'm going to have a dark in that little green area and then I'm going to lighten it up with, let's go with that medium yellow. Just make a lighter green with your palette knife. And I might tone that down just a little bit with some white, just because it's a background color and we just don't want too much. intensity back there. I'm going to put a little more dark. I made that a little too light as I even moved some white back out over there. There we go. Even though that's a little tiny area up here, we're going to just go ahead and give it a little variety with two shades of green. So I'm going to start with the dark. I'm going to sweep with my brush. Just sweep toward me so we don't bend the bristles backwards. And just lay down a little bit of the dark green. You want to lay the paint thick enough that you don't see the texture of the cotton canvas. So you can see right here, there's little bitty bumps where you're seeing cotton canvas through. And, and with oil paint, we don't want to see that. We want to really lay it on there thick enough that um, you're covering up the canvas so that you see the thick, luxurious oil paint instead of canvas. So I'm just using the very tip of my brush and dabbing very gently. If you don't go gently with the brush, you'll end up just pushing the paint back up into your brush instead of leaving it on the canvas. So think of it a lot like icing a cake. Oil paint's a lot like icing. You just want to spread it. All right, that's enough for the grass. I'm going to move on to the concrete sidewalk. And so we're going to make the gray with our typical gray formula. So we're going to go with the dark ultramarine blue. We're just going to take a little bit of that. And we're going to mix in some of the dark brown. Mix those two colors together. You're going to get something close to black. And if we add a little white to that, we get a gray. And same thing as I said before about variety. You see how much variety is on all that color? That's what makes it more interesting. So I'm going to make two or three shades of the light gray, and then I'm going to make a dark gray for the shadow. So a little more blue. Different proportions of blue and brown. Maybe this, maybe this black gray formula will be a little more lean towards the blue side, like the shadow area. By throwing in different percentages of these two colors, different combinations will, will show up so you'll have something a little more interesting. I personally think that is too brown, so I'm going to cut that pile in half, add more blue to half of it. I think that's pretty good for our shadow color, so I'm going to cut this pile in half again. Add some white. I'm trying to now make this lighter color. If a pile is going in the wrong direction, rather than to keep working with it, and it might get bigger and bigger and bigger in the wrong direction, I usually just cut it in half and sort of experiment with, with half of it rather than trying to experiment with all of it. That's, that's a nice color. So I'm gonna make one more, maybe something a little more medium. So not as much white I'm gonna add into that pile this time. And maybe a little bit of blue. Let's go with a little more brown, a little more blue to get that. So now you can see I've got four shades from dark, dark to light here. And I might not have made enough, but we'll see how far we can go with this, these piles I've made here. Take a moment to rinse that green out of your brush. And then we're going to like slide that paintbrush along, lift up. I'm gonna lift up that darker one first. We can start, just put a little of that in there. That's a little dark. I might even throw a little white right in there with my brush. I'm gonna go back up to this corner and start in with some light. And now's, now's the time when I can 
start thinking about that little scallop shape I was talking about here. You might even add a little white just occasionally. Like I said, if you pick up white and add it into these colors as you're going or pick color up as you're going, each brush stroke turns out to be a pretty little different variation and it makes it more it makes a painting more interesting. When we're creating a painting, it's a lot like a short story or a, or a song. We want someone to be, usually we want somebody to be interested in what we're saying or the story we're telling. And to do that, it's like an author uses certain sentences or words or um, variation of, of things to keep you interested. And it's just like that in a painting. We want our viewer to be interested and to, be, to not get bored. So if we painted this all one color gray, the viewer would get bored and wouldn't really be very interested in it. So many times when you're standing in front of a painting and you can't decide why you just love that painting so much, um, often it's things like, you know, you wonder how did that artist see all that variety just in a concrete sidewalk? And that's what makes art interesting, that you're showing the viewer that you saw something a little different. And we definitely want the viewer to see something different than, than the, what the camera shows. Because the camera is very limited compared to the eye. Um, so I, as you see, I'm just using almost little crisscross brush strokes. And again, if I was just to paint this like painting a house, it would be really kind of boring for the viewer. And so the variety of texture and brush strokes and um, which is wonderful, you can do that with oil, you're not gonna get that with watercolor. You get all this nice texture. Uh, that also is very pleasing. Oh, don't forget the little space between. Uh, that's also very pleasing for the viewer. And I'm about ready to come back in with this shadow shape. And again, I'm holding the brush very lightly. So it looks like I'm tapping away, but as I'm tapping, I am barely touching that canvas. So there's a wonderful quote in the painting world that your brush should never touch your canvas. And what that basically means is you should be sliding a big layer of luscious oil paint in between. They call oil paint the buttery medium because it is very much like spreading really smooth butter. And we can come back and touch up if we need to anywhere later. You know, I like to do that at the very end I am going to put this little diagonal um, seam in the concrete because I think that helps indicate that maybe it's a little sidewalk. So I'll, I'm going to take the chisel end of my brush, just this really sharp chiseled end. And I'm going to just barely tap into that dark and then I'm going to just drag a little light line across so we get our little sidewalk line. And if I made it a little too big or too dark, I just put a little light on the chisel under that brush and I'm gonna just lighten that up just a little bit. Just go right over it. That looks a little more realistic. And I believe that is it for step two. Yep. All right, we're back for step three and this is gonna be fun. We're gonna do the umbrella um, I know I, I know I usually say we do the things behind, but I think the, the child and the umbrella can both be considered foreground. So we're going to start just because it's up higher and we won't get our hand in, in the work as we're painting. We're going to start with the colors up top. So the first color, let's, I'm going to start right here at the darkest. So I'm going to take the dark blue, that's your ultramarine blue. And now this is this phthalo blue is beautiful, but it's a much lighter blue than it looks like when it's dead, when you see it there in the pile. So when I say dark blue, I'm talking about the ultramarine blue. I'm going to take that and we're going to add just a little bit of dark brown in there. We don't want to make it too too black. It's just going to be a dark gray blue, grayed out kind of blue. So I'm going to sweep with my brush forward, pick up that paint, and we're going to fill in this first. Just a little bit of paint on the tip of the brush. Um, 
And you can use the end of that chisel. I love this flat brush because you can get so many different brush strokes out of it. That's why I include it as the first brush in the series. Um, it's got this, this nice little corners so that you can even get like just little tiny brush strokes out of it if you need to. Um, so there we start with the dark blue. That was easy. And so for the next step, what I think we'll do is instead of wasting this paint, I'm just going to pick up a little of this, add some of the lighter blue into it, a little bit of white, not too much. Pick up some more of that. Let's use up some more of that if you have it. I'm going to use up all of it first blue. And we still have to go a little darker. So again, I'm going to cut that pile in half because it was going in the wrong direction. A little. There we go. It's getting a little better here. And we can have a little fun with these colors. They don't have to be exact. Uh, maybe I'll just get a little more dark blue in there. And that'll be for the next little band of color. Just a slight change from the previous one. All right. Pulling it towards the little center of the umbrella there. Then the next blue, I think we'll just use ultramarine all by itself. So I'm going to pull that over here. Rinse that brush a little bit. Pull that ultramarine over and just go with a nice clean, clear ultramarine. And I think the next step, as you can see, when I'm laying this down, I, I left a little tiny space between where the color is up from the blue, the blue stripe to the green grass. We, we'll talk about those little edges later, but if you, if you go too far, as you all know, you'll pick up some of that green and then you'll get a, a kind of a mess going on. So just try to have a discipline of just getting close, as close as you can to that other color. And then I'll show you how later on we'll deal with that. The next one is just obviously going to be that little bit of ultramarine, and we're going to add white to it to make a pretty light blue. A tiny bit more white. Lift that up and then make sure you're always pulling the brush in the direction of the bristles, never pushing, pulling it. And then it, you can see I'm taking this nice, what I love again about that chisel end, I've got paint on the end and I can just go right up to that other color without really touching it. And that's again a little bit of a discipline that you've got to try to master. It takes a little practice, but if you just go slow, don't go too fast. I might be going a little fast because I've had about 45 years of experience doing this. Um, and I'm not worried about that edge being really perfect. Again, imperfections are nice for the viewer sometimes. I mean, if they're not so imperfect, things are not so out of whack that they distract the viewer, sometimes imperfections can kind of be pleasing. Now this next color is fun. We're going to go right over here to the um, Viridian Green. That's your really emerald green. And we're going to add white, just a little bit of white to that. I may, well, I think that's okay. As you can see here, later on, uh, I, I put all the colors in, and then at the end, we're going to add a highlight where the light's coming from the top, and then a little bit of a shadow, and that's going to make that umbrella three-dimensional look three-dimensional. So again, pick up, picking up that paint correctly, loading that brush correctly. Uh, you see I sweep towards me and pick it up, and as I get over here, I flip that brush over because the paint's on the other side, and then just let it glide along. I might need to make some more of that color because that's a, a bigger stripe there. So a little more viridian, a little white. And 
And I move pretty fast with my palette knife as well, and you guys might need to get a little practice with that. I'll give you a good hint on the palette knife. Um, again, I'm making a pretty good straight line because that brush is in such a good shape. These are great brushes. And you can see how my paint is sliding along. Okay, so for the next color, I'll talk about the palette knife. Um, I like the ones I'm sending to you all, I like because they've got a nice bounce to them. Um, so what, as you can see, this half doesn't really have a spring to it, but this, the front half does. And that, so that's the only half you use. You just use this very front half. I usually use just about the front third. So when I'm, this will bend and you can move your paint on and off of the, off of the knife. Uh, so, so I just kind of slice my color that I need and then just kind of use it like a little mixing tool. I'm gonna make that pretty light. The light aqua, just Viridian and white. Rinse the brush, sweep that brush towards you. Flip it over because it's on the other side there. There, there are other ways to load the brush, and at some point one month we'll do a, a painting with really thick paint, and that will be a chisel-loaded project, which means uh, we will um, pretty much uh, cover the entire brush with paint. But right now, as you can see, I keep it on the end, on kind of on one side, and then I almost kind of draw that little scalloped edge and then next we are going to um, go to the yellow i'm going to clean this brush out pretty good before i go to yellow because of this greenish color if i try to paint yellow it's going to turn that yellow into a, a kind of a greenish yellow so I like this warm yellow. I think it's called medium yellow. I usually call it cadmium, but on your tube, I believe it's labeled medium yellow. I'm gonna pick that up straight and we're gonna put it in on the next band here. It's pretty easy. All right, so if we remember from our early art education, red and yellow make orange. So I'm going to take the bright red. We don't want to go anywhere near that purpley, cool purple red because this is a real warm color. So we're going to go with this warm red. Probably not much of it. Red's pretty strong. And then we're going to pick up some of this yellow over here. And I would like to lighten that up a bit, so I'm going to add some white. There we go. That's a nice orange. Thought this was a nice spring project because the gray skies are getting really old by the time early spring arrives and we needed a colorful project and that's it for the orange I make that a little bit bigger All right, now, the red, I think we're just gonna use this red, keep light, make life easy, and we're just gonna use that red straight from the tube. That's it. 
Now this, 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 what I call eggplant purple here. Um, as we remember that red and blue make purple, since that's kind of a reddish purple, like a red violet, we're going to need a little more ultramarine. And since it's a red violet, a purpley kind of red violet, we would know to stay away from that warm orangey red. We're gonna use this kind of purpley alizarin. Crimson, I think your tube says crimson. The, the long full name is alizarin crimson. But uh, just pick up your crimson, a little bit of the ultramarine blue. In making purple, the reds are always pretty strong. So if you don't get quite the color you want, it's probably because you have the wrong percentage of colors in and often it's because you've got the wrong percentage of that um, crimson red. Although it looks like I've pretty much got pretty close to what we want here. So a little bit of white in that. Take off some of that bright red. That will contaminate and affect the pretty color I just made. So you can see when I'm, I might be twisting my brush, but I'm never bending bristles back. I mean, I might go, you know, in, but it's always using the, making sure that the bristles don't bend backwards. And we're almost done with the umbrella. Then the last color up there looks kind of like a, just a brown. Not really very pretty. Um, I might just take a little brown, maybe put it in this blue. Let's see what we can get. Mm, maybe not. Maybe just a little brown. Maybe throw a little bit of red in there and see what happens, see if it gets better. That's nice. Very little of it showing, so we're not going to worry too much about it. I guess brown deserves to be a color, too. <laughs> you should be enjoying the nice bounce in these brushes, too. They're just, they have such a nice spring to them. And all right, that is it for step number three. Okay, we are on step four and we are going to paint the jacket, the little leggings and the little red boots. So, I sounded kind of Southern when I said that. little red boots. <laughs> little red boots. Um, underneath the umbrella to get a nice three-dimensional effect here, we want to have some shadow tucked up under that umbrella. So we're going to have two different shades of yellow. I'm going to have the darker shade and the lighter shade. So first we're going to take some of this medium yellow and for the shadow, I'm going to add just a little bit of the umber. And you know what? Umber might be just too brown. So I'm going to take a little tiny bit of umber and a little ochre. And that might make a little more of a gold. Let's see if you think that's what I did. Hmm, that might work. I might put um, maybe a little more yellow in there. Then I think the jacket, we can probably just use the, uh, the yellow straight from the tube. But the more I look at that shadow, it's a little warmer. I put the, the brown and ochre in it, and I'm going to put just a speck of red in there to kind of make that a prettier color. Yeah, I hope that'll work. Mm, we'll see. <laughs> it's a lot of trial and error, even, like I said, years and years and years of practice and I still have a little trial and error every day. I'm going to pick up the darker color. The 
the saying in painting that you're only going to be as, as good as as many miles of canvas as you've covered. So if you think about that, it means that you've got to cover a lot of canvases before you really find yourself excelling, unless you're a natural prodigy, which, you know, those don't come along very often. Most of us just work at it because we love it. I'm going to go over here and pick up just the yellow from the tube and get that yellow slicker rain jacket color. I'm blending a little bit of that into that shadow color because I got a little dark on the shadow. And also you want to transition. So see, it's going to be darker way up under the umbrella and then it transitions to a little lighter where we're picking up some light. And then just for fun, I'm going to go back to this gray that I had or anything kind of like that that I had left over. And I'm going to pretend that well, not pretend, I'm going to add some little snaps. I think last time I did it, I might have lightened them up a little so they weren't too distracting. And we can come back and look again, but um, I'm going to go move right, in, right into the leggings. And they are pretty much based on that Viridian green that emerald green with a little white. So I'm just gonna put it back into my pile of that combination right here. I sure didn't make very much, you better make some more. Viridian, a little white. And you know what, I'm gonna split that pile into two colors because uh, we wanna have a light source. So I think there's gonna be some little shadows and highlights in those leggings. So I'll make one green a little lighter. And then one's a little darker. Make sure my brush is clean. Probably need time for a new paper towel here. All right, so I'm going to take, it looks like from the highlights on the umbrella that we're going to put in in a little while and the light hitting the side of the raincoat that um, there's a light source somewhere right around here. So we're going to put the dark maybe here along the edge. When I'm painting big paintings, I usually hold my brush really far back to get some nice big loose brush strokes. But when we're working on these little ones, we can move in on the brush handle just a little bit. Now I'm gonna put the lighter side in. That doesn't look too much lighter. That happens sometimes. It might look lighter on the page, but we get it on the canvas and it doesn't, so I just added a little more white. And then I'm kinda of just gonna take make some little sideways strokes that look like, oh my goodness, you see what I did? I went right down over the boots. <laughs> You did go I did. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even watching where I was going. Q-tip with water. Take it right out. And so you know what I think? I think my jacket was, the jacket's a little long. I'm going to take a little bit of the jacket off. Q-tip with water. That's just erase that. I, thought, I think it'd be cute to have more leggings showing, so I'm going to pull those leggings up a little higher. There we go. And in the meantime, taking out the little jacket, I took out a little concrete paint. I mean, uh, I left a little more need for concrete, so I'll take a little bit of my leftover gray. The leggings look like they're being beamed up into a <laughs> little ship. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when the boots are added. Okay. Let's add the boots in and then we'll see what we need to do on the leggings. So see, we even make mistakes after years of painting. And I, again, I'm gonna use just the, I don't need, mix, need to mix paint. We're gonna use that red straight from the tube. 
Um, bring those feet down at a little angle. I don't want it to be too skinny. The boots are going to be wider than those little legs. Looks like I make <laughs> that boot came, came out too far too. Get the Q-tip out, save the day. Q-tip. So he doesn't have a huge foot on one side, or she. And hopefully I've got a little concrete color. I sure do, a little bit left. Put that back in there. That's the nice thing about oil painting. It's so easy to fix and correct. I don't want shadow to be above the boot because it, in real life the shadow would be cast by the boot. So I'm putting a little white back there, touching up a little bit of that concrete there. Again, at the end, the last steps when we come back and fix any mistakes, check our highlights and shadows. Uh, I even left out some of the highlights and shadows for the, for the last step here. I'm gonna take that chisel end of my brush and kind of make it look like those boots are wrapping around that leg a little bit. There we go. It's starting to look a little better on the boots. Now, I will add the shadow on the boots now. I'm going to take some of this brown that I had over here because when your feet land on the ground, there's going to be a shadow cast right where the feet meet the ground. And I'm going to go ahead and take that gray and maybe shrink this second boot just a little bit. There we go. They match a little better that way. And then... I think we'll take a break because the next step uh, for the final step in the final editing, I'm going to talk not just about shadows and highlights. So we'll take a break and then start back. All right, we're going to finish this little painting now. And again, this is the step that I like to call what I used to call working the magic because it was kind of where it all came together and just went from pretty good to really good. Um, but it's also what I call final editing. More technically, it would be called final editing. And that's where you make sure your light source and your shadows and lights and darks are all nice in there and, and your edges are looking good. So here I've got kind of a sharp edge on the bottom of that jacket. It looks real straight and sharp. I'm gonna soften that like I did here. Um, so let's start with the umbrella. Remember I, I said these, these areas here where I, I got the color really close to the concrete sidewalk but I didn't want them to touch because then I'd have a big mess on my hands we'll come back now and just just take the paint just barely let those things touch don't drag it around wipe it off just fill in those little blanks and then wipe off your brush um, you know just occasionally where you see them if they're distracting like this is this is a big one here I'll turn my brush so you all can see I'm just gonna tap that green get it a little closer Maybe I need to pick up a little more green. Yeah, I'm going to have to pull it down a little bit. Same with the light, this light here. I'm just going to pull that down a little bit. And then where the jacket and the concrete mix, I'm just going to push that. Whoop. Sometimes there's not enough paint there to push. I'm going to pick up a little more paint to just kind of push towards that edge, fill in that little gap. I'm going to soften this edge, maybe make it a little curvier or something so it doesn't look like such a hard, sharp edge because that jacket really is just swinging around back behind the child. So we're going to soften that little corner that I made. There we go. That's better. 
And um, on the umbrella, I'm gonna add some of those highlights and darks. So, do I have, and I'm gonna just get a little more of that Viridian and pull this down as a dark. So we see it looks like the umbrella's curving downward. Same with the blue. Just picking up ultramarine blue, just spread it into, oh, I just got a little viridian on there, that's okay. Just go right over it again. Pick up the a little bit darker aqua. So you can see how that's making that look three-dimensional now. Shadows and highlights. That's the secret whenever anything looks flat. Sometimes we'll talk about temperature, a warm, or the, how warm or cool a color is. And I don't want that to look like it's a straight line because this is a curved umbrella. So we're just going to kind of break up that straight line. And... Probably the shadow color that I used on the rain jacket can be used on this yellow band. Pulling that shadow down. This has been a fun project with all these fun colors. Mm -hmm. We all tend to kind of go for the colorful stuff around here. Although, every once in a while, we'll do paintings in very muted colors, and they come out beautiful, too, so. And I'm adding, um, in the red, let's just go, let's try using this crimson color just to kind of pull down a shadow. I think that's working. Now it looks like my orange, my orange didn't get dark enough. There we go. I'm letting, I'm tapping it a little harder than I usually do. That make, that's making it blend into the, oops, color. Oops, my stomach's growling. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost dinner time. Okay. There, now the umbrella looks pretty, I think pretty good. You know what will help? make it look curved up. I put the shadow for it to curve down, but for it to get that curve up, would you be, I'll be just a little white highlight? I'm gonna get very little on my brush. I don't wanna overdo it. Well, that didn't, I did, did not overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't do it at all. Clean that brush off a little bit. Well, here, we've gotta get out some clean white, or I'm just gonna be dragging aqua through there. I bet it got all contaminated. Whoops. All right, chisel end of that brush. Just very lightly going to add some white. See, it doesn't take much. People tend to do two things, I've found. Don't go dark enough in the shadows and go way too light in the highlights. I've seen that for all the years I've been teaching. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> we just blend that in. Perfect. All right, and then I think the last little fun thing we're going to do. I add a little bit of highlight in the eggplant over there. Okay, good. And you know what else I forgot to do is put the little top of the umbrella stick in there. I'm going to go over to my, maybe my brown, that burnt umber. Mm -hmm. Just get brown on the chisel end and we'll put in the little, the little, just wiggle it like that. And you've got the top of the umbrella. And then I think check the leggings. I was going to go back to those little shadows. See how I've got a shadow up under the jacket that makes those leggings look like they're going up under. So shadows are so important for that kind of thing. To make, to make it look like it's three-dimensional, like the jacket is over top of the leggings, I tuck a shadow under there. Those little leggings are cute. They're a lot shorter than that. And I think they're no, cute. No, but I think they're cute. It makes it look like a little, a three-year-old a, instead of a, a six-year-old. Six exactly. <laughs> That's it. 
And then I think one of the most fun parts on this are the highlights on those boots. Tucker's snoring over there. Our little studio dog. Cute as can be. Don't ever want to hang out in the studio without having Tucker here. So I thought now, now that I've put the highlights on those boots, I see that I maybe need just a little more shadow on them. So this, this side over here needs some shadow. Just picking up some brown. Oops, a little too much. And I think we're pretty close to being finished with this little project. And again, you all watching the video, feel free to pause as often as you need. I know you don't need me to tell you that, but I do, I do go a little faster than, than most people. Um, just trying to make sure those boots are the right size and shape. There, that's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with it. I hope you all did well with yours and be sure to sign it. Uh, I usually use a little tool to kind of scrape out my name right here. Take something like the end of your palette knife and try that if you want. There we go. There we go. All right, happy spring painting. We'll see you all next time.